forgotten than sorrow and suffering to sustain the heart and soul through the tragedy of a war narrative. As the story continues, Rami's world narrows. She loses every, almost everything and everyone. What keeps her going? Consider this scene much later in the book about two years into the regime when every glimpse of beauty seems to have vanished. There was no time to mourn, no time to look back. Again, planting season came. Mama was sent to another location to dig irrigation ditches, and I was put in a youth brigade that traveled from one area to the next planting rice. There were about 20 of us in the group, all girls, and we worked from dawn until sunset. We slept together in one hut built at the edge of the forest near a work area. Our parents, we were told, couldn't be wasted caring for us. We were not children anymore. This morning at the rice fields, a new secret guard was assigned to keep an eye on us. We paced back and forth on the narrow dike, going nowhere, eyes watching. The long gun hanging from his shoulder brushed against the ground as he walked. The black cap shaded his eyes, and the muscles of his jaw flexed in and out in clenched teeth. He tried to look older than he was. If only he knew we were afraid of him because we were so young. Around me, tiny figures in black rose and bent up and down, up and down, a step or two back, the rhythm I could count and feel even in my sleep. We moved slowly, pushing 